when I started out trading some years ago. I followed the normal doctrines of trading, you know, risk 1% of your capital, risk 2% of your capital. If you were extremely risk loving, perhaps you risked 3% of your capital of your account. Over the years, it began to dawn on me that actually that may not serve the purpose that I want to achieve. As the years rolled by, I began to think, is this really what I want? I am trading with a £100,000 account. As I got more experience in trading, I began to ask myself, is this really what I want? Do I want to risk 1% of my account? Why would I have a $100,000 account if I was only going to risk $1,000? Why have $99,000 sitting in the account if I was not going to risk them? So you may come up with all kinds of mathematical explanations as to why I would want to just risk 1%. But it began to annoy me that when I had really good days, I just wasn't making enough. I wasn't capitalizing on as much on them as I wanted to. And as I got more experienced in the art of trading and mastering the psychology behind good trading, and I just want to add here that I I don't for one second think that you can become a good trader purely by studying technical analysis or fundamental analysis. I think you need something else to be a good trader. I think you need to have a, a keen and astute awareness of your own limitations and a desire to overcome those limitations. And it is with that in mind, I am going to do something that I was in two minds about doing. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you risk 45% of your account on one trade. And if you get away with it, and it becomes a big winner, how the trading day can then escalate into something where instead of making 5% on the day and you feel happy about that, you're making 1000% on the day. Now, don't think for one second that this is something that I advocate to the general public, because it isn't. It would be irresponsible of me. And as I said, I have been in two minds whether to show you the recording of the trades that I did uh, yesterday. I caught a trend day. I caught a trend day in the DAX where it rallied most of the day, and I was on board all the way up and I kept adding to my position and I added in big size. And then when the US markets opened, the NASDAQ to me seemed to falter at a double top and I began shorting it. And I didn't record the DAX trade, but I recorded the NASDAQ trade all the way from that double top, all the way down where I added, how much I added. And the purpose of this video is not for you to get into the uh, misguided illusion that you sh too should risk 45% of your account on one trade, unless you're very certain, of course, but even so, I wouldn't recommend it. But perhaps to give you, to, to provoke some considerations in your own mind of why are you risking just 1% of your account? and why would you have so much liquidity sat on your account if you're, if you're not deploying 99% of it? And, and of course, I know that there's all sorts of considerations to take into account in this, such as collateral margin, uh, initial margin and variation margin. But having said all that, it's, it's in my, my opinion is that there are many, many excellent traders with a really good grasp or technical analysis who are just not trading big enough. They are one lot traders when in the reality they should be 10 lot traders. And the thing about trading size, it, it sharpens your senses. It sharpens your uh, mental acuity. And 
it certainly also pushes you out into some cold dark corners where you don't feel in control anymore but i'd like to remind you of a the words of a very famous trader in fact he wasn't that famous he was only famous after he had had passed on and he said that really good trading is uncomfortable you need to be uncomfortable when you feel comfortable you're probably not doing it right and what i want to show in this video is what it feels like and looks like when you're pushed outside of your comfort zone and one way of pushing yourself out of a comfort zone is to add aggressively to a position that is going in your way on a so-called trend day. So I hope that uh, with this in mind that uh, you will enjoy this video and it would uh, perhaps open up your perspective of what trading also can be. I haven't recorded this video for glorification and I'll tell you why I am saying that because on the surface of it it may seem that I seek glorification by taking a 250,000 Danish kroner account which is about 40 or thousand dollars into about four hundred and sixty thousand dollars in one trading day so pretty close to half a million dollars but I'm not and let me quantify that because what you're seeing here is not the first time I've done that but I'm not showing you all the times where I have deposited 250,000 Danish kroners only to lose half of it you know within the first hour or so of the trading day and then having to refund yeah I am overall a profitable trader but I am certainly not the kind of guy whose equity curve just rises steadily it uh, it has some some fair amount of fluctuations not that i ever go into negative equity but i just don't believe in having a big account that then just sits there idle that means that if i deposit a hundred thousand dollars on my account i want to put that a hundred thousand dollars to work and say for the sake of the argument that you had a hundred thousand dollars that you wanted to trade with my recommendation would be to do not do not deposit a hundred thousand dollars because it goes gives you a false sense of security deposit a tenth of it stick the ninety thousand dollars into an interest bearing account if if these accounts ever exist anywhere on planet earth but stick it somewhere else than in a brokerage account and use the ten thousand but use all of the ten thousand or use as much as you can when you're absolutely certain because it has it has several purposes one it sharpens your senses and it gives you patience if you know that you only got one or two bullets in the gun you will become far more selective when you deploy those bullets at least that's my opinion and and my opinion is that i don't want trading to be this linear uh, progression i want to make outsized returns and i am prepared to take the risk otherwise i could go and make a career in a well-paid job that has a linear steady return you know i will get a monthly salary but that's not what i am looking for and if you're anything like me then i think this video might give you an idea of what trading could also look like at least that's the plan did you ever hear the story about a couple that went on holiday to las vegas they were lying in their hotel room and the man couldn't sleep so he says to his wife i'm just gonna go for a walk so he walks the the halls and eventually makes his way down to the casino floor and of course being las vegas everything is open 24 hours a day seven days a week never shops and he picks out a ten dollar bill and he gets it converted to a chip and the story goes that he puts ten dollars on number 17 which is his favorite number and 17 comes up so he gets his money back many times so he puts everything that he wins on number 17 again 
and 17 comes up once more. And he does it three or four times, and before he knows it, he is he is making a couple of hundred million US dollars. And of course, the casino boss has got sweaty hands. So he puts all the money on, and this time, it's not 17 that comes up. So he wanders back to the hotel room, and his wife says, how are you? Are you able to sleep now? He says, yeah, I think I've had my excitement. I put a bit of a, a bed on downstairs and she says, well, how did you do? And she says, ah, I only lost $10. Now, that's an extreme story. And I doubt very much in the, in the format that I just told you is a true story. But perhaps there's a, there's a shit of truth to it, perhaps in some permutation. So if you ever come across a day trader who says that he makes a thousand percent in a day, you may also have reason to be skeptical. And I too would be skeptical. And I'm not telling you this story because I want to show off. Rather, what I want to do is I want to tell you about a thousand percent day that I had a couple of days ago. Because I think that even though it is an extreme example of day trading, and it comes with a lot of caveats and a lot of doubts, no doubt, I think there's also some important lessons in it for those people who like to trade aggressively. And that's the reason why I have put together uh, this presentation. Now, this presentation does come with a warning. I'm not endorsing this kind of trading. I don't do it every day. When I do it, the conditions have to be right. Uh, I don't mind taking this kind of risk on my own account, but I would never do it on the Telegram channel that I run. I run two Telegram channels where I post my trades free of charge live in real time, but I would never engage in this kind of risk uh, approach because I think most people wouldn't like it. So the first trade that you're about to see, which wasn't filmed, I provided the documentation for it, but it wasn't filmed. I would have lost 45% of my account if I was stopped out. Now, right there, you should you should stop and, and pause because most textbooks, most trading guides will advise you not to risk more than 1% of your account. And when you're risking 1%, Obviously, you're not going to make a thousand percent on an account if you're risking one percent. But the reason why I take much bigger risk than is endorsed by guidebooks and money management advice is that if I have a hundred thousand dollars on an account and I want to risk one percent of that, well, it stands to reason that I'm risking a thousand dollars. But but my purview right from the beginning of trading has always been. Why do I want to have $99,000 on my account that I don't use? I know that there's some initial margin. I know that there's some variation margin in order to keep a position open. But why would I have so much money on my account if I'm never going to use it? I would rather have 100000 stick 90000 into a bank account, and then go all out with the £10,000. Sorry, $10,000. That's my remit on trading. That's how I like to do it. But the reason for this warning page is that uh, this is probably not for everybody. Now, the first trade went well, which served as a catalyst to take on even more risk. I have provided some document, some documentation for the funding. I put 250,000 Danish kroners, which is about 40,000 US dollars. And I do that at seven o'clock in the morning. And by nine o'clock that night, some 14 hours later, the account is now at 2.8 million Danish kroners, which is about $465,000. Now, all of this, I will, of course, provide documentation for. But again, I stipulate here, this is not because I want to show off and, and show you, oh, what a great trader I am. Because although I am, I'm a decent trader, uh, if I really had to give a balanced representation, I would have to also show you all the times that I put 250,000 Danish kroners in and I've blown them all within a, an hour or two of trading. So see the video of here, not as my attempt to show off, but see it as an attempt to show you 
what trading can be like if you decide to be aggressive and you don't even need to risk as much as I have. What this video could also give you some enlightenment to is to how to add to winning trades. So the content here is that this is an extreme example of adding to winning trades. Most of it happened to be caught on camera because I like to record my trades so I can go back and view them for later, uh, later educational guidance for me. I feel that this video is educational, but it does have an extreme risk profile. Not only that, you need a, a fair degree of margin. I'm trading with TDE365.com and here I'll have 200 to 1. Also, the right day has to be present. You need a trend day. And trend day is a, usually on stock indices, only one in every five days. But not only that, you need the right mindset. Because it's not like you're going to receive an email in the morning before the trading day starts and saying, Hello, Tom, today is a trend day. You know, trend days have a sneaky way of crawling up on you and they tend to be the result of gap ups that then gets filled or gaps down that gets gift filled. That's when you get the best trend days. I have identified them as part of my research, but this video is not about how to identify trend days. This is about what you do when you think that a trend day is at hand. So here is my my credit via or oh, sorry, credit wire. 250,000 goes into my account. This happens in the morning. And here's a little bit of instructional content. Um, I do a lot of pattern recognition, but pattern recognition in a manner that you have perhaps not been uh, subjected to before. So, so what you're seeing here is Thursday's trading day in the DAX, and then you see Friday's trading day in the DAX. And you actually have a very nice trend move higher. It isn't a trend day because of this reversal back down again. I mean, we pretty much close on change for the day. When Friday's price action is not able to supersede the high of the previous day's price action, i.e., when the high of Friday is unable to get above the high of Thursday, during regular trading hours, the odds are overwhelmingly high that we are going to get a lower move on the Monday, which is when this video, when with this trade transpired. However, when the market gaps up on a Monday, when you were expecting a lower move because of the Thursday Friday pattern, you often get what's called a trend day. So the market, as you can see, is trading around 14,000. And I felt that 14,000 was probably also going to add as a psychological barrier, uh, barrier in the context of support for the market. So I started buying here at quarter past eight. Uh, this is UK time. I started buying the DAX at uh, 14,007. And I, within a relatively short space of time, I bought a, 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 a pretty decent base position. The market did dip just below 14,000 at uh, 837. And I, I bought a little bit more there and here. But otherwise, what you should see is that I pretty much add to winning trades throughout. I don't add to losing trades, but I needed to establish what I called a base position. Now, as I pointed out earlier, my stop loss, had I been stopped out, would have lost me half of my account, 45% to be exact. But I didn't get stopped out, which was fortunate. I had put a stop loss down around 13,000. I think it was about 950, 60 or thereabouts. So I didn't get stopped out. I'm not saying that it was close, but it wasn't far off either. And as the morning progresses, and the DAX is rallying, I will buy more and more. So by midday, I'm long 3,750 Danish kroners per point, which is about 600 or dollars per point movement. Now, the next page will look, will show you what that looks like on the chart, because this is where I'm beginning to buy. Of course, I didn't know that this was going to happen. I just, I just made a bet that 14,000 was going to hold. 
I use some price action. You see this bar here. This is a significant bar because it's a bar that makes a fresh low, but it closes in green and it has virtually no tail. And I use that as a guide that if the market begins to trade above this high, then price action will dictate that we are going to get higher prices for the following two free bars. See, that's the thing about technical analysis. Most people don't realize that the technical technical analysis is really only uh, has forecasting value for the for the first two or three next bars after you get the signal. But that's perhaps an academic discussion for another time. I'm buying uh, 2000 here and another 1000 here. This is Danish Kronos. And at this point, I'm feeling pretty good because this bar takes out the prior tops high. And I'm buying another 500 here on a slight retracement. And then I'm adding to it as we're breaking above this high. So all in all, I'm feeling pretty good here because the market is zooming higher and I'm up about 150 or ah, 100 and 105, 110 points. Now, trend days happen in about 20% of all trading days and they're not easy to catch. I've spent years working on methods to identify them. And as I said, this video is not about me describing how I identify trend days. That has to come at another point. But one of the key components for a trend is that the market is gapping higher and surprising many people, i.e. catching people on the wrong foot. So when you think about it, the essence of a trend day, there's very little overlap between the bars. Yeah, you see a lot of overlap here in the beginning, but then you pretty much see the market just keeps making higher lows and higher highs with the occasional uh, 20 minute retracement and then higher highs all the way. Every single bars high and low is higher and lower than the previous one. That's a good sign for a trend day. So the, the, the paradox of a trend day is that everyone basically agrees. Everyone thinks this market is headed in that direction. Hence, there's no overlap. So was this a good trade? Yeah, it was pretty good. Was it perfect? Hell no. And, then, and, and there's definitely room for improvement. And why am I saying that? Well, that becomes evident right now. This is me taking my profit here about one o'clock in the afternoon. And you can add this up to yourself, but it adds up to quite a lot of Danish kroners. What I think is interesting is this. I decide to take my profit right here and wait for the US Open because I'm thinking the US market is probably where the next opportunity is going to be. And the problem here is I'm beginning to think because when you're looking at this chart here, there really isn't much to argue for taking profits. And I miss this entire move. In fact, I made 110 points, but I left 250 points on the table. Nevertheless, I did well. And later on that afternoon, NASDAQ became my focus of interest. I started shorting the NASDAQ, establishing a base position at 10 minutes to 4 UK time. I did that around 12,654. Let me show you what it looks like on the chart. I short the NASDAQ down here, and I do it because this to me seems like a double top. This is a 10 minute chart, and I'm basically selling a double top. My stop loss at this point would be above here. As the market slides lower, I see one green candle. And that green candle is important to me because I use that as a an inflection point, like a, a pivot, a, like a pivot point, essentially, but not pivot point in the context of, you know, open, high, low, close, divided by four. Not those not those kind of pivot points, but the pivot point says is at this point here, this still looks like an uptrend and we have nothing but higher lows and higher highs. But if this green candles low was to be broken, I would have imagined that this market, technically speaking, should be headed to the old lows. So I'm placing orders in below the low of this green candle, essentially betting the open profit that I have from the earlier position. So as you can see here from my trade records, I am placing quite a lot of short orders as this market falls. 
But again, what you should also notice is I'm not adding to, uh, I'm not adding to a losing position. I'm purely adding to a winning position. So this is what it looks like up close with the entry points, price and time. Now at this point here, I'm actually getting a little nervous because my position is big and the market has made a, a 90 point rebound. So I'm hoping for some kind of weakness. It was actually a mentor of mine, Bryce Gilmore. I sat and traded with him on many a nights uh, trading S&P 500 futures. And one time he said to me that he liked to actually wait. If he wanted to short, he liked to wait for one red bar on a shorter time frame. So if he was trading off a <clears throat> a five minute chart, he would then zoom in on a one minute chart and wait for one red bar. If he had the buy signal, sorry, the sell signal on a five minute bar, he would wait for a red bar on a one minute on a one minute time frame before he actually initiated his sell short. At this point here, I'm actually just selling short the moment I see this bar materialize. Well, what you don't realize is that this bar closes at its low. But 10 minutes is a long time when you sit and wait for a market bar to close. And during this, it could have come down here, it could have gone back up again. But the fact that it closed right at its lows told me that this bar here is longer than the prior bar and longer than the bar before. It closes below the respective lows of the two, two prior bars. And to me, this feels like a continuation bar of the trend that has already been set in motion. That's why I'm beginning to add even more aggressively to the short position. So now I got the base position I established. I got the first add-ons and now I'm adding even more. We started shorting at 12,653. We're now down at 12,530. So we're basically just keep squeezing the salt side, keep squeezing, keep, keep pressing, being aggressive. Down here now the market is 12,422 and obviously my account has swollen. Um, but I didn't want to make the mistake that I made in the DAX where I got out way too early. So I am gunning for the old lows to be taken out. That's what I'm betting on here. Now I want to, I'm going to give you some, some time, some pause for reflection. Can we agree on a couple of things here? Can we agree on that what I'm doing here is not something you wouldn't be able to do either? It may not be that you can do it in this size right now because this is a question of this, the, the, the emotional pressure. But if you were trading, say, a dollar a point, and you could do this at a dollar a point, don't you think you'd be able to do it at a dollar five the next time? And don't you think then you could squeeze it up to a dollar ten the next time? And before you know it, you could do it in two dollars a point. And if you can do it at two dollars a point, you've already doubled your trading size. Now imagine that you have five years to keep progressing, getting better and better and better. Don't you think you eventually you could get up to a decent trading size? And are you going to experience days where you are pressing the, the, the trend? only to see the market do a V reversal? Of course you are. One of the reasons why I'm not this aggressive in my Telegram channels is because of the amount of V reversals we've seen, for example, in the NASDAQ index over the last six months. And the amount of times I had built up a significant profit only to lose it all because I've added too aggressively and then the market all of a sudden changed direction. But in this case, it's not. And hence, I keep adding to my short position. Because we're not down at the old lows yet. And eventually, the market reaches the old lows and I begin to take profit. And it's a big profit. And that's how you make a thousand percent on an account in a day. I hope that this actually made sense from you, not from anything else, but from a pragmatic point of view. I don't want you to sit there and think, wow, that was amazing. What I want you to do is to think, I think I could do this. I may not be able to do it in 500 a point at the moment, but if I could do this at a one a point or two a point, imagine where I could be in a year's time. 
Imagine where I could be if I began to add to my winning trades, not losing trades. Losers are the ones that are adding to losing trades, but winning traders are the ones that add to their winning positions. Now, expect to be uncomfortable. And this is something that I, I talk a lot about when I discuss the psychology behind trading is that you've got to expect to be uncomfortable. And if you want to read a good book about this, then you should read the book um, by Charlie D, Legendary Bond Trader. It's, it's written, uh, it's published by Wiley and it's written uh, by William Fallon. Actually, I got about 25 copies. So uh, if you want to get one off me, you know, just send me an email. And we're sure we can sort something out. But it's a really good book because here's Charlie D who says, good traders are the ones who know that good trading will make you uncomfortable. Most of us will seek comfort, be it in life, in vocation, in trading. But actually, if you are used to being uncomfortable, you'll be used to running positions and you'll be used to seeing your paper profits swell up and then disappear again, swell up again. Because if you look at this trend down here, it's not like it goes from here to here in one straight line. This move here is a good 100 points. This point move here is 70 points. So that's 70 points times, I think at that point I was short 6,000 Danish kroners. Well, that means that 300,000 Danish kroners just disappear out of my account again on paper profit. That takes a little bit of getting used to. It means that you are uncomfortable. And this is what it all looked like when all was said and done. There's the entries, there's the exits, time of entries, time of exit. I run two free Telegram channels. One is a live day trading channel where I trade predominantly stock indices. And then I run a swing trading channel, which mostly is FX trades. The day trading channel is perfect for those who can follow the market fairly closely during the trading day. And I send entries, exits, for example, this morning, I bought the DAX and the Dow. And I think we made 40 points in the DAX and we made 10 points in the Dow. The Dow was a really pathetic trade because I got out after 10 points and had I held it for another hour, then I would have made 110 points. So don't expect perfection from me either. I'm here all day, every day, most days, but I am every bit as human as everyone else is. The Swing Trading Channel is a good place for those who just want to have a one or two trading signals a day sent to their phone. Obviously, both of them are free of charge. I make my money from trading, but I like to actually educate people because I think there's so many charlatans out there in the world who just sell people shit, absolute garbage. And I want to have an opportunity to make my little mark on the world. My legacy is going to be here's some really good education. If you want to be a member of those channels, then send me a message via Telegram to at Tom Hugard for access. And if you have any questions for me, then uh, you can direct them to hello at tradertalk.com. Thank you so much for listening.